Welcome to Street Knowledge with Chris Graham. Welcome to the podcast. I am Chris Graham and uh, have a guest today to talk some baseball with us, Lacey Lusk. Lacey is the um, Nationals correspondent uh, for Baseball America, a publication that, uh, boy, this time of year, you really better be attuned to uh, for the upcoming Major League Draft. And of course, uh, you know, if you're a fan of whatever uh, major league team you're a fan of you got to keep your eye on the farm and uh, I'm a Nats fan so I've got some questions for Lacey about the the the, the Washington Nationals farm system uh, Lacey welcome to the show hey, good to be here thanks Chris uh, so maybe first uh, looking at the upcoming uh, draft uh, uh, you know the Nats have been um, in in the last place the last couple of years. I, I, you know the that what that translates to having a decent decent uh, uh, pick in the first round. Um, we know in past years that the Nationals have done great with the draft. Uh, there were two back to back drafts that led to Steven Strasburg and I guess they, they weren't quite back. Were they? Were they back to back? Bryce were, Harper, yeah. they and, were. And Strasburg. They were. Yeah, I, losing my head there. Uh, so. Um, What's the buzz? What 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 are the Nats looking for? Um, you know, either position player, pitcher, high school guy, college guy. What what are their priorities going into um, the twenty twenty two draft cycle? Well, I think they've shown um, over the years that they'll just get the best player available, and regardless of price, they don't try to um, you know kind of get a discount in the first round and then pay more later. They'll get whoever they think is the top guy and they're not afraid to get someone who's had Tommy John surgery or anything like that. But, I, you know, at number five, they're not looking for someone um, like that this year, but they should be able to get um, another elite prospect to go with Brady House, who they got at number 11 last year. Got to see Brady this past weekend uh, on Sunday, uh, made a trip to Fredericksburg on my way back from uh, the Big Nats. Uh, on Saturday and, and, and Brady House and that group. Uh, I mean, we we're there to see Strasburg, but talk about Brady House. Uh, big shortstop, 6'4 shortstop. Does he project as a shortstop uh, when he gets to the major league level? Is he going to maybe have to move over to third? Uh, and then, you know, the bat, of course, we, we know what we see there, but uh, what, what, are, what are their thoughts on, on, uh, on Brady House? Yeah, they'll keep him at short as long as they can. And then if he has to move to third, that's fine. I mean, plenty of guys have done it. Uh, while still on their way to the majors. And of course, several have done it in the big leagues, like through Manny Machado's now, um, but there are several, but I think he can stay at shortstop for quite a while. Evan Lee, uh, I'm, when I'm looking through your archives here, Evan Lee, and he's, uh, as we're talking right now, he's uh, three innings into a start against the Mets. Um, talk about him and his rise through the, the minor league system and um, what uh, fans can expect from him uh, as, as his career unfolds. Yeah, it's exciting for him to be called up from double uh, a, he, um, didn't pitch a whole lot in college at Arkansas. Um, also, um, hit over 300 as a freshman, um, kind of a first baseman outfielder. Um, so his arm is, uh, doesn't have a lot of tread on it, but he has, uh, shown pretty quickly and, uh, ability to pitch, uh, pitched well last year at high a Wilmington, uh, and was uh, on their 40 man. And when they had a spot open for today, after having to use, uh, not pitch, not playing last Friday and having to play a double header on Saturday, they l were looking for a starter today. And, uh, I know he had a couple guys on each of the first two innings, but pitched his way out of it. Um, looks calm out there. Um, and he, uh, he, of course, after pitching in the sec is pretty high level and they had, I heard on the broadcast caught a little of it earlier um, 11 guys drafted from his one his year at Arkansas and he's the first of those guys to make the big leagues the uh, the Nats at the major league level have made a couple of moves with pitchers uh, it looks like there's going to be some flux now we know you know Stras Steven Strasburg if if things go well with him in his next start maybe he, he might be getting called up to the big leagues soon or relatively soon thereafter um, are there other uh, prospects of, uh, in terms of pitchers that may be ready to get that call, even for a short-term thing, like maybe Lee's a short-term guy, but are, are there other guys who are either ready to make a short-term move or even a, maybe a seat, uh, you know, kind of maybe finish the season with the, the big club? 
Uh, there was a little bit of, bu- of buzz about Jackson Tetro, a right-hander, Triple A Rochester, who's pitched well in his last few starts uh, for the Red Wings. Um, other than that, most of their top guys are um, a little bit lower, or you're looking at Cade Cavalli, who still has to get some command issues straightened out, and I don't think now's the, the best time to call him up. Um, but yeah, they have a few guys, and they've um, they did make quite a. F- few moves here recently to call up some bullpen arms too so um we'll see how how many guys get new opportunities i was going to ask about Cade cavalli you mentioned the command issues he was the minor league uh, player of the year for the nat system last year um you know other than generally command issues i mean is there any concern about you know how he's been struggling this year so far no i don't think so his last couple starts have been better too um Sometimes this happens, and it's not as easy as just shooting straight up through the minor leagues. Um, a guy like Mackenzie Gore with the Padres was a huge prospect, got to AAA, really struggled, and um, just was starting to write the ship a little, and they called him up, and sure enough, he's starting to um, recognize, realize some of his promise and pitch the way he did, um, the way people always thought he would as a top prospect. And I think Cade could end up going along a similar route. The uh, news today from, uh, at least I saw uh, Mike Rizzo was on the Sports Junkies earlier today and um, told the uh, the guys there that uh, uh, Juan Soto uh, will not be traded. Now we'll see, you know, sometimes ultimatums like that work out, sometimes they don't. Um, that could have led, I mean, you know, if, if you do trade a guy like Juan Soto, you're expecting a haul of prospects. Uh, um, um, you know, how, what is the state of the Nats farm system overall? I know they've been trying to replenish, you know, after several years of being a contender, um, you use, you know, you, you use your minor league system as much as you can to, to make trades and get guys to, you know, at the trade deadline, waiver deadline, that kind of thing. And that can deplete your system. Um, you know, we're only maybe not even a year into the um, rebuild, but um, uh, what's, what's the state of the system overall? Yeah, it's still uh, in progress, whether you call it a rebuild or reboot, whatever you want to go with. Um, uh, Baseball America um, had them last in baseball, 30th, and I think bumped up to 23rd after the series of moves um, right at last July's deadline. Um, So you throw in the number five pick this year. They've um, shown a penchant for making some big international signings, so they could certainly move up toward the middle. and a, a Soto trade would maybe bump them up in the top 10, but it's uh, probably too early. Um, maybe a year from now I could see it happening, but I understand Mike Rizzo being as adamant as he was. Um, the report is, you know, one rival exec uh, said he could see Soto getting traded. Um, and obviously the earlier you trade him, the more prospects you get for him. But um, I think they're building some around him and, and, could could be enough for him to th- think about staying, but um, it's too early to make a call like that this year. I understand that. Yeah, yeah. So let's talk about the book project you're working on with David Driver. We had David on last week, and we were talking about uh, quite a few things, his book on European basketball. But you guys are, are looking at uh, a baseball in Virginia particularly, right? That's the focal point. Talk more about what this project entails, and I guess it's coming out relatively soon, right? Yeah, by the end of the summer is the goal. Uh, David has done the bulk of the work on it, to be honest. Um, and it really covers the whole state, um, every level, um, every kind of county and city lists the uh, guys who've been in the big leagues who have made a big impact. Um, even, uh, you know, you pretty much name it, high school, college, um, the major leagues, uh, coaching fraternity, uh, There'll be certainly a lot of UVA references in there and um, not just UVA, but, you know, name it from Epa Rixie on uh, to the current, current day. That's interesting. Yeah. I, I know a little bit about baseball history. I know the name Epa Rixie. So that you, you guys, you guys do delve into the history uh, books there a bit. Um, you know, I, I, I don't know that too many people um, when they think about the, the history of baseball here think too much about, but you know, the, the college baseball scene has been really hot and heavy the last few years. Uh, maybe the emergence of Brian O'Connor's group at Virginia, um, Virginia tech has, is built They're They're hosting a regional this weekend. 
um, high school baseball, prep baseball, travel baseball, uh, you know, the, the Hampton Roads area, uh, producing quite a few great players, uh, the Uptons, uh, what, David Wright, Brian Zimmerman, among those guys. So, you know, recent vintage history, there's, there's, quite, a, there's, quite, a bit of, um, there's quite a bit of baseball history here to, to delve into. Yeah, I think a large percentage of it is recent. Uh, I mean, Virginia only made three NCAA tournaments until Brian O'Connor got there. And now, of course, they're regular and have won a title and been to Omaha five times. And then um, Tech comes in with Gavin Cross, a projected top 10 pick, and wins two out of three. They're obviously loaded this year, too. So, And then you look at your ODUs and VCUs and Liberties, and uh, so many other programs are on the upswing as well. Are there um, so when you talk about the recent? Now I want to jump back to your your uh, your draft knowledge here. Are there any uh, prospects from either high school baseball in Virginia or the college ranks? You mentioned Gavin Cross. Uh, that's I, I broadcast games in the spring of, uh, at VMI for ESPN Plus. We got to see Gavin in person. Um, the center fielder Chase DeLouder from V uh, from JMU, who had a big summer last year uh, up in the Cape Cod League. Those two guys might stand out. Uh, talk maybe about those two guys, and then anyone anyone else that might be, uh, you know, hearing their names called early in the draft uh, this year. Yeah, I think those are the two. Um, this year, UVA doesn't have a, um, a projected first or second round pick, but um, it sounds like the Hanover team has um, a couple good prospects. Um, and then last year, Madison High School up here had a. Uh, high pick James Triantos, who's doing well in the Cubs system. Um, I don't think there's anyone quite as high as him uh, this year, but next year I saw there are a couple guys in the top 100 uh, from Virginia, um, specifically from Northern Virginia. So uh, how do you do your job? I'm As a fellow journalist, I'm curious, what, 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 what's a day like for Lacey uh, in terms of, uh, you know, monitoring, you know, just baseball world and then focusing through the Nats. I mean, you know, how do you keep up with everything? Oh, I don't try to do everything. That's for sure. Um, I was the minor league editor at the actual office in Durham from uh, 1997 to 2001. Um, so that was more of a all day, every day, um, keep up with the minor leagues. Um, and my current role is correspondent. I just, uh, chip in once a month with a, a feature on a different nationals minor leaguer. Um, and then still like to tweet about the different guys and uh, make some phone calls. And, and when I, whenever I get new quotes, put those online. Um, but really it's more of a side gig for me. Now I work uh, at the society for human resource management, sending out newsletters. So um, it's pretty nice that all this background has given me a chance to have more of a nine to five job, but still, still, um, be in touch with the minor leagues and, um, baseball in general, which is, I mean, my wife was like, I said, I don't have any hobbies. And she said this week, you have a hobby. It's baseball. And I'm like, well, I don't know if that's a hobby or job. It's kind of in the middle right now, I guess. <laughs> I got you. That's great. I, I noticed that on your Twitter. So now that explains the Twitter. I, I wonder if there was a separate Lacey Lusk. <laughs> who you get confused with all the time for HR. So <laughs> that's funny. Now my dad has the same name and he still plays softball in his eighties. Uh, wow. I travel, but he lives in the Richmond area. So that's, that's where cool. I got, got a lot of uh, this following baseball all over the place kind of attitude. Well, it's, it's so it's but somewhere between a hobby and a job, but it's definitely a passion. It sounds like so. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Good deal. Good deal. Well, um, I think, I think that'll cover us. Thank you so much, Lacey, for your help. I want to get you back on and talk more maybe after the draft and get a sense of how the Nats um, maybe fare in the draft uh, coming up soon. Sure, my pleasure. Thanks. All right, thanks so much. And for our listeners out there, thank you as well. Have, have a great day, everybody.